a comprehensive look at trends, fund profiles, and more in exploring ETFs. We are going to take a look back at the best performing stock areas of the past decade and then the ETFs associated with those areas with our ETF research director, Nina Mishra. It's an interesting way to kick off the new year, taking sure. one more look back, right? Sure, sure. So first up, I would like to wish all our viewers a very happy new year and congratulations to all those who believed in U.S. stocks <laughs> and U.S. stock ETFs because it was such a phenomenal decade for U.S. stocks. Yeah, it didn't start that way. Uh, yeah, so the decade started with, you know, major concerns that the fallout from the financial crisis yep. might continue for years. Everyone was talking about financial crisis then. But the decade ended with one of the longest stock market rally. Yeah. And 2019 was such an epic year for stocks. Now, looking back at the decade, the S&P 500 is up 248% during the decade. The Dow, which is price weighted, is up 243%. And the NASDAQ, which is tech heavy, and it's a growth, uh, e index yep. that has significantly beaten the other two major indexes with a gain of 411 percent. And who knows if it's over yet? Who knows? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, U.S. stocks uh, significantly outperform the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. And there are some reasons behind that. U.S. companies are much more profitable than other companies, other international companies. And according to the Wall Street Journal, the dollar gained 23% during the decade mm. against the basket of other major currencies. That is because uh, economic growth in the U.S. after the financial crisis was much better than other countries. Mm -hmm. And then growth areas, growth stocks significantly outperformed value stocks. Uh, the companies which were growing fast, particularly technology companies, investors were willing to pay uh, for growth at any cost. They were not looking for cheap valuations. That is why growth stocks have outperformed and continue to outperform value. Who knows whether that may reverse, but as of now, growth continues to do well, very well. Okay. Uh, technology was the best performing sector. Energy was the worst. Uh, now, this was the trend we saw last year, too. In 2019, technology gained more than 50%, whereas energy was the only sector which had single-digit gain. And that is the trend over the past 10 years, too. All right. Well, like I said, we'll see if it continues uh, yes. here as we begin another year and another decade. Yeah. I mean, past two days, stocks have come down a little bit because yeah. of concerns about tensions in the Middle East, uh, but not a lot. The market has been relatively fairly, uh, you know, resilient to right. all those headlines. So we will see what what comes in the future. All right. Well, you've been busy digging these out here for us. So let's just take a look at some of these ETFs. Uh, there's uh, an iShares product, right? A semiconductor ETF? Yes. Uh, so when I looked at the best performing ETFs, I have taken one each from those areas. So, for example, if, if there were two, three semiconductor ETFs in the top 10 list, mm -hmm. I took one. The best uh, one. The best one. Uh, so we have discussed uh, chip ETFs in, the, sure. in some of the recent videos, too, because this was the best performing area of 2019 as well, right? Uh, and uh, for chip companies, uh, there are so many growth areas now with the Internet of Things, smartphones, self-driving cars, cloud mm. computing, yeah. now rollout of 5G technology. So because better, more efficient chips are required, so that is why these chip companies have been doing very well. This is the largest uh, semiconductor ETF. It's a market cap weighting it follows market cap weighting, but then imposes a, a cap of 8% on individual securities so as to avoid too much concentration in a single company. Charges 46 basis points, and very popular with investors, with 2.4 billion in assets under management. It has gained two, sorry, 
457% in the past 10 years. Now, let's take a look at the CTF. You can go to the code page on zax.com, read our articles, research report on this ETF, and you can go to the external homepage, iShares webpage for this particular ETF, and look at the portfolio and other details. Now, as I mentioned, 8% cap on individual holdings, and Bidia, Texas Instruments, Qualcomm, Intel, Avago, AMD, which was the best performing stock of last year. All the popular names. All the popular names are top holdings in this ETF. All right. Spider S&P Biotech ETF. And the ticker symbol is XBI. It is. It follows a modified equal weighting methodology, so a lot of tilt towards smaller, uh, mid-sized biotech companies uh, rather than focusing only on uh, giants in the space. So it, uh, because of this tilt towards smaller companies, this ETF has benefited a lot from rising mergers and acquisitions. Mm -hmm in this uh, area. And we have discussed biotech ETFs also in, in some of the recent ETFs, uh, ETF videos, uh, because biotech was, again, the best performing area of 2019. Uh, now, uh, biotech companies, smaller biotech companies have benefited more because cash-rich pharma companies are willing to pay a lot uh, for acquiring these innovative biotech companies uh, uh, to boost their own pipelines. And these small innovative biotech companies have been developing some cutting-edge therapies in the areas like CRISPR, gene editing, cell therapies. Uh, so that is why the CTF is one of the top performers. Very reasonable priced with 35 uh, basis points in expense ratio. Very popular too, 4.4 billion in assets under management, up whopping 455% during the decade. Mm -hmm. uh, let's take a look at this ETF. Uh, again, you can read our research report and articles and go to State Street webpage for this ETF. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, look at the holdings. So because, uh, as I mentioned, it's an equal weighted ETF, so you will not see a lot of well-known biotech giants, uh, rather an equal weight of about 1.8, 1.9% to some of the innovative biotech companies. Exact Life Sciences, Biomarine, Global Blood Therapeutics, FB, Sage, Mirati Therapeutics, these are some of the companies which have benefited a lot because of their innovative therapies and interest by uh, pharma and biotech giants in this space. Then the First Trust Dow Jones Internet ETF. So as the name suggests, it holds internet companies mm -hmm. and it holds the largest and most liquid internet companies. It follows market cap weighting uh, with a with slight modification, uh, 52 basis points in expense ratio, which is a little bit pricey but reasonable for the uh, for the specialized exposure that it provides. Very popular, 7.9 billion in assets, up almost 450 percent during the decade. Again, to take a look at the CTF, you can go to the code page. And from there, the external homepage, first trust webpage for this ETF. Uh, not surprisingly, Amazon, Facebook, Cisco, Netflix. Netflix is one of the top performing stocks of the decade. decade. Salesforce and Google, these are the top holdings in the ETF. So in ad addition to technology sector, it holds it has a lot of exposure to communication services and consumer discretionary as well. Now, uh, communication services was carved out of information technology, mm -hmm. and uh, so the companies uh, like Facebook and Google, Netflix, they went from technology into communication services. Yep, I remember that. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, iShares has another product on your list, the U.S. Medical Devices ETF. Uh, this surprised me a little bit. That, yeah, me too, because medical devices is not really uh, something that a lot of people pay attention yeah, to. Yeah, not, not very hot or very popular with investors usually. Yep. This ETF did pretty well uh, when Obamacare was implemented because uh, medical devices makers and distributors benefited. Uh, it did pretty well in 2018 as well when healthcare was the top performing sector. Last year, healthcare was uh, did not do so well, so the, this ETF also did not do so well last year. But it before that, it had done very well. 43 basis points in expense ratio, again quite popular, 4.9 billion in assets under management, up 418% during the decade. Again, to take a look at the CDF, you can go to the code page and from there, iShares web page for this particular ETF. You can read other details, look at the portfolio and top holdings. As it is market cap weighted, uh, so it is top heavy, Medtronic, Abbott, Thermo Fisher, these are the top holdings with uh, more than with almost 40 percent exposure in the top three holdings. And so. lastly, an Invesco Trust. Uh, so the ticker symbol is QQQ. Right. Uh, it is actually a growth, large cap growth ETF. Okay. It holds uh, stocks listed on the Nasdaq 100, non-financial stocks listed on the Nasdaq follows a modified market cap weighting methodology among the cheapest out of the ones that we discussed, which is what 20 basis points in expense ratio, and very popular with 87 billion in assets under management, one of, one of the most popular ETFs. Mm -hmm. It has gained 411% during the decade. Uh, to take a look at the CTF, uh, you can go to the code page from the Invesco homepage for this ETF, one second, okay, that was surprising. Um, you can also <laughs> look at the portfolio. So as I mentioned, it's a large cap growth ETF. So in addition to technology, you will get communication services to Facebook, Google, Netflix, which you will not normally find in a technology ETF, mm. and a lot of exposure to consumer discretionary as well. Looking at the holdings, not surprising, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, and Alphabet, Google are the top holdings in this ETF. All right, now let's see how they all compare. So uh, I, on the slide, I have all these five, and they all have gained between 400 and 460 percent during the past decade. Spectacular performance by all five areas. So I don't know if I should ask you if you own them now or did you own them in the past <laughs> 10 years? Uh, so I hold the semiconductor ETF, SOXX, in the ETF investor portfolio. And in my personal trading portfolio, I have held the Invesco QQQ for some time. All right. Thank you for that. Thank you for taking a, a last look back at the old decade. And don't forget, there's always more. ETF information, it's on our website, zax.com. Use the Funds tab in the top toolbar to help guide you to that section of the website. Use the Podcast button at the bottom of the home page so that you can access uh, Nina's ETF Spotlight podcasts where she tackles a lot of other interesting information in the world of ETFs. Also, don't forget that if you want to follow Zach's Market Insights, buys and sells, and other recommendations from portfolios in real time, and portfolios typically that are closed to uh, anyone else except subscribers. You can do that. You can do it for a limited time only, though. Uh, it'll cost you just a dollar. And to get more details on how you can do that, all you need to do is visit zaxcom promo. Meantime, with Nina, I'm Terry Ruffalo.